You probably could have run out of memory if you've ever trained a model in PyTorch. Sure, you can get a bigger GPU or more GPUs, but if that's not an option, here are three things you could do to make your code run smoothly. Number one, reduce the batch size and use gradient accumulation. Your memory usage grows linearly with your batch size. Fortunately, you can easily reduce the batch size by adjusting the parameter in the data loader. But hey, you know what they say about a small batch? It introduces noise into the training process because the model updates are based on less data. You can mitigate this by gradient accumulation. Instead of updating the model after every small batch, you accumulate the gradient after several batches and then update the model. So a small batch with gradient accumulation, that is what you call a batch made in heaven. Number two. Mixed precision training. This is how the number one is represented in PyTorch by default. Zero, zero, one, one, one. Well, I'm not even going to try to finish that because otherwise I'd be running out of memory before my GPU does. The point is, this way of numerical representation is called FP32 because it uses 32 bits to represent each parameter in your model. You can actually tell PyTorch to use only half of those bits though, which is called FP16. And this is how you write the number one in FP16. See the difference? Seriously, I wish I could knock off that many zeros from my student debt. The catch with using FP16 instead of FP32 is that it's less precise. Luckily, tools like Torch AMP or Apex automatically manage the trade-off between memory and precision using a strategy called mixed precision training. This strategy runs the forward pass in FP16 and the backward pass in FP32. From my experience, I prefer Torch AMP over Apex because it's easier to set up. Here's how it works. First, you import the package, create a gradient scalar before your training loop, and then within the autocast context, run the forward pass and compute the loss. Next, you scale the loss, perform back propagation, unscale the gradients, clip the gradients, update the optimizer, and finally, update the scalar. Number three, gradient checkpointing. Wait, what? You can checkpoint gradients too? Trust me, I had the same reaction when I first found out it's a thing. It surely is a game changer, especially when I'm training models on a tiny GPU. Normally, when you train a model in PyTorch, it saves all the activations in memory during the forward pass. You can see how the memory usage spikes every time I call the forward function. But here's the thing. You don't have to store all the activations. When you use gradient checkpointing, you only save those activations which are crucial. To get the remaining ones, just make a trip down the memory lane and relive those crucial checkpointed moments. Like this one. Right, Teddy? PyTorch makes it super convenient to do this with the Torch Utils Checkpoint tool. All you need to do is to import the function and wrap the layers you want to checkpoint with the checkpoint function. PyTorch will save the input and output of those layers, but not the intermediate activations. During the backward pass, those intermediate activations are recomputed before updating the weights. This recomputation means that gradient checkpointing trades speed for memory efficiency. But the good news is, you can choose exactly which layers to checkpoint, so you don't have to slow down the whole model. When I train my models, I use a debugger to set breakpoints and figure out which layers are eating up the most memory. The biggest memory hogs get checkpointed. Sure, I'll lose a little speed, but with a tiny GPU, it's either gradient checkpoint or there is no point. Yay! You made it to the end. 
just like the models I trained after I applied those memory saving techniques. I highly recommend you try those techniques before upgrading your GPU. If you like this video and find it helpful, click the thumbs up and share it with people who could have run out of memory. Drop a comment down below about your biggest PyTorch headache and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more quirky content and helpful tips that you can't even get from ChatGPT. Oh, you think this is the end of my cringy CUDA puns? See you in the next video.